Hello, my name is Dr. Aidan Elliott and this is the Complete Guide to Shakespeare. Welcome to this video on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. In the next few minutes I'll use just ten quotes to help you get an understanding of the themes of this great play. The first thing we hear in this play comes in the prologue. The lines read, From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Star-crossed here suggests that their fate has been predetermined. The alliteration draws our attention to the word fatal, and Shakespeare here is using something called the primacy effect to make us focus on the role of fate. Shakespeare uses mythical references in many of the plays. Here, gallop apace you fiery-footed steeds towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Juliet is anxiously waiting for Romeo and uses this allusion to wish that Phoebus, the sun god in Greek mythology, would hurry home to his lodging in his chariot carrying the sun so that night will fall and she can see Romeo. Phaeton is also mentioned. Now he's the son of Phoebus and when he drove the sun chariot, hence the term wagoner, he lost control of it and Phoebus had to kill him with a thunderbolt. A hint here that Romeo and Juliet's love is also fated to end in death and tragedy. A factor that's often overlooked and often excluded is the fact that Capulet is getting old. When he hears the fight starting in Act 1, Scene 1, he says, Give me my longsword. But his wife replies, saying it would be better if he asked for a crutch. And this loss of power is one of the reasons that the fighting is getting out of control in Verona. He has much to do with hate, but more with love. We see that Romeo has noticed evidence of a fight between the Montagues and the Capulets. So, to talk about much to do with hate makes sense. But why does he say more with love? I think more with love here highlights the fact that to love being a Montague means you have to hate being a Capulet and vice versa. Something else to look out for is contrast. Here we have a stark difference between black and white. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows. This line describes Juliet when Romeo compares her to the other young women. Do look out for these contrasts during the play. They're often comparisons that are complete opposites, helping to show how absolute and extreme the characters are. Now the differences between those who belong to the right group and the wrong group can be quite subtle. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Tybalt hears a Montague accent. Notice that he doesn't recognise Romeo, but he recognises the wrong accent. This has a ring of truth. People all over the world are identified by their accents and then often discriminated against. This also has a root in the Bible. In the book of Judges, chapter 12, verse 6, one group asks another to say a word, shibboleth. And when they pronounce it as sibboleth, they are identified as the enemy and are killed. There's a great deal of religious imagery in the play, and here we can see Juliet treated as a holy shrine to be worshipped in these famous lines. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this, my lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Here we see Romeo personifying his lips as pilgrims that have reached a religious shrine and want to demonstrate their devotion through kissing. Now here we can see lips being used in a very different way, as a way of sealing a death pact. And lips, O oh you the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Romeo is no longer worshipping at a shrine, 
He's already in a burial chamber looking at what he thinks is Juliet's dead body. He embraces her and uses his lips to kiss her and seal or ratify an agreement to follow her to death. This is one of the most famous quotes in the play and an interesting use of metaphor. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. The window becomes the east, and Juliet becomes the sun with all of its qualities, which might include brightness, warmth, life-giving, reliable, possibly even worshipped. Note that he also wants Juliet to metaphorically rise and kill the moon. So although they're lovers, it's typical of the violent language and mindset in this play. Both cannot coexist, sun and moon. And lastly, this play includes a number of oxymorons that appear in this play. O serpent heart hid with a flowering face, did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, dove, feathered raven, wolvish, ravening, lamb. An oxymoron is where two terms appear together, but appear incompatible. And the idea is that Juliet has been deceived by Romeo's outer beauty. But what I think the oxymoron reveals is that Juliet is actually torn between these two opposites. He's both fiend and angel, dove and raven, lamb and wolf. So do look for some of these features as you read, watch and study the play. And I hope this brief video has given you some new insights into this most wonderful of plays. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.